Pace at 12. The night beat starts right now. Unseasonably hot temperatures and record challenging heat have the city making sure people have cool places to stay during peak hours of the day. Yeah, right now San Antonio libraries are currently doubling as cooling shelters. The night team's John Paul Barajas spoke to people cooling down, has some tips to beat the heat and some recommendations from ERCOT. Air conditioning. It's a luxury, but on hot South Texas days, it becomes a necessity, and for some, it's hard to come by. I don't have a TV and, or AC. That's why I come in here. Cool off. This man wished to remain anonymous, but he and many others took full advantage of the city opening its libraries as cooling centers. Others who didn't want to go on camera said all they have are fans, and their homes quickly turned into what felt like saunas. This helps out. If this wasn't open, what do you think? What do you think you'd be doing right now? Just in the shade, trying to, trying to stay cool. On this record challenging hot weekend, you're at risk of heat cramps, heat exhaustion, and heat stroke if you're not well hydrated or are a part of the more vulnerable population. That includes adults older than 65, children under four, and people with medical conditions. The library is keeping people safe and also keeping them comfortable. I can take the heat, no problem, but just that I don't like when I take a shower and then I'm sweating all, all again. Right, right, without doing nothing. These hot days also put a strain on the energy grid. Yesterday, six Texas power facilities went offline. So ERCOT is asking people to conserve energy by not using large appliances like dishwashers and dryers between the hours of 3 and 8 p.m., as well as keeping the thermostat at 78 degrees or higher when possible. This will ensure there's not blackouts or rolling outages. Tomorrow we'll have another hot day where we'll be pushing triple digits, so cooling centers will be open again. If you need a ride to get to one, VIA will be providing rides free of charge. And tomorrow on the Night Beat, we'll show you how these hot temperatures aren't just impacting civilians, but also how firefighters respond to calls. Katie. Uh, thank you, John Paul. Good information there. And yes, another very hot day coming up tomorrow. And the heat is hanging around into next week. So um, important to, to remember those tips for trying to uh, conserve power where we can. We're in this for the next several days. Today, 97 at the airport. That ties the record for today's date, 97, set back in 19. 95 and again what I really want to stress here look at that average number the number in the middle that's if you want to kind of think about where we should be this time of year so we're 10 degrees or so above that um, and the spring sizzle as I've lovingly dubbed it uh, will continue for several more days tomorrow's record is 96 we're going 98 the record on Monday 97 we're going 100 and likely another record Tuesday of next week. High temperatures stay in the mid to upper 90s into the end of next work and school week. So the springtime sizzle is hanging around. We'll talk more about what you can expect tomorrow. Hint, dry heat on Sunday. That's a little bit of good news. We've also got a total eclipse tomorrow night, a lunar eclipse. I've got that forecast coming later in the newscast. Tim. We'll see you in just a bit. Thank you, Katie. Meanwhile, medical examiners have released the name of a man killed outside of a West Side sports bar earlier this week. He has been identified as 28 year old Zhixiao Zlu. It happened around uh, 2 o'clock on Tuesday morning. Police were called to the Perfect Score Sports Cantina on the Northwest Loop 410 and the Ingram Village Shopping Center. Police say an officer patrolling nearby heard gunshots from a shootout happening behind a wing stop nearby. Lou was standing outside the bar and tried to dodge those shot, but was hit and killed. Tonight, the cause of a large grass fire on the east side is under investigation. This all happened around 6 o'clock tonight. The San Antonio Fire Department says the fire started on a dirt road just off of I-10 between Dietrich and Bicentennial Roads. About 11 units and two county brush trucks responded. Crews were able to put out that fire, but uh, it did burn about seven acres. Right now, fire investigators don't know the cause, but they do believe it was intentionally set. The good news, no homes or businesses were damaged. Crime Stoppers asking for any information you have that could help identify a man they say robbed two women at a laundromat. Police say the man on your screen robbed two women at gunpoint. It happened at a speedy wash on Nacogdoches Road. After taking the woman's belongings, the man took off in a vehicle with other people inside. 
Crime Stoppers may pay up to $5,000 for information that leads to felony arrests in this crime. Police investigating after 50 gunshots were fired outside of an east side sports bar overnight. This happened at Sir Winston Sports Bar on Nacogdoches Road. Police say it happened about 1.30 this morning. They say two men got into a fight with some bikers there at the bar. Two people were wounded. One person was in critical condition. Authorities say two men took off in a red vehicle. An investigation is ongoing. The reward for the Texas inmate who escaped custody has gone up to $50,000. The hunt continues after the convicted killer, Gonzalo Lopez, escaped from a prison bus. Texas authorities believe Lopez has not ventured far, remains in the area of Leon County. That's between Dallas and Houston. Lopez is said to be highly dangerous. Authorities are asking anyone with information on where he is to please consider that hefty reward. At least 10 people now confirmed dead after a shooting at a supermarket in Buffalo, New York. Another three wounded in what authorities are now calling a racially motivated hate crime. The suspected shooter was taken into custody and later charged with murder. Law enforcement sources telling ABC News he may have possessed extremist views cultivated online. ABC's Ed Dranch has the latest from Buffalo. The horrific scene unfolding inside this supermarket in Buffalo, New York, shortly after 2.30 Saturday afternoon. He exited his vehicle. He was very heavily armed. He had tactical gear. He had a tactical helmet on. He had a camera that he was live streaming what he was doing. Authorities say Peyton Gendron of Conklin, New York, allegedly shot several people in the parking lot before entering Topps Market, continuing his rampage. Radio send, send as many cars as you possibly can. The shooter was not from this community. In fact, the shooter traveled hours from outside this community to perpetrate this crime on the people of Buffalo. Buffalo police quickly taking the 18-year-old into custody. The suspect put the gun to his own neck. Buffalo police personnel, two patrol officers, uh, talked the suspect into dropping the gun. He dropped a gun, took off some of his tactical gear, surrendered at that point. New York Governor Kathy Hochul, who hails from Buffalo, expressing concern. It's hard to know what to say. Uh, this is my community. I know this community well. This is the worst nightmare that any community can face. The FBI is assisting local authorities in this investigation. We're aggressively investigating this at the federal level as a hate crime and as uh, an instance of racially motiv motivated violent extremism. Gendron charged with first degree murder and ordered held without bail. That was a Dranch reporting. The long heated debate now on abortion growing hotter after that Supreme Court draft opinion leaked nearly two weeks ago. The leak saying the court's conservative majority could soon strike down Roe versus Wade. This would prompt over two dozen states to restrict or ban access to abortion. Thousands gathering today in Austin's capital to rally in support of abortion rights. Former Senator Wendy Davis taking the podium. Here we are in this moment where our daughters and our granddaughters are going to have less rights than we had when we were growing up. I cannot even believe we are here. Those against abortion also made an appearance today. Several of the groups organizing the Bands Off Our Bodies protests say they're already planning more events. A rally here in San Antonio at Main Plaza also drew a huge crowd today. It's National Salvation Army Week. The charitable organization is hosting several events aimed at uh, raising money. Tonight's benefit dinner is coming with high expectations after a tough red kettle season. The night team's Lee Waldman reports. This is our second biggest uh, fundraiser of the year. The Red Kettle Campaign is the Salvation Army's biggest fundraiser of the year. Well, this is the second biggest one. The Salvation Army's benefit dinner at the Hilton San Antonio Hill Country Hotel has big expectations after last year's Red Kettle Campaign. Well, we had a pretty big shortfall, actually. We had, and during the Red Kettle season, we had a shortfall of over $100,000. Brad Mayhar with the Salvation Army explains there are several reasons why. One of the big ones, the COVID-19 pandemic. Another ripple effect of COVID. COVID is, you know, people were maybe 
you know, hurting financially, people were struggling. So, you know, it can be a number of factors. Their goal with this dinner to raise over $100,000. Who better to help us make up, you know, some of the shortfall that we had during the Christmas season than the man himself. Remember the Alamo. Henry Winkler was the night's keynote speaker, an honor he tells us he takes seriously because of the work the Salvation Army does. Here we are in this moment when the world seems to be going kablooey. Traditions are breaking down, respect is breaking down. It's scary. It is becoming very scary. Then you have the Salvation Army that lifts you up. In no matter what area you're having a problem in, there seems to be uh, a, a mission. All of the money raised will stay right here in San Antonio and help local families. At last check, over $96,000 has been raised. You can find more ways you can help on KSAT.com. Reporting live, we've all been KSAT 12 News. It's a problem that's not going away, the shortage of baby formula, how moms throughout the nation are struggling and how the White House is responding. And it's a ripple effect. This week, San Antonio hit another high in diesel prices, how it's affecting a very important resource for people locally. And there was a big competition here in San Antonio today. Taco vendors from across the city competing for best taco. Up next, what kind of tacos were judged and what the event is really about? We'll taco all about it right after this. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> well, Taco Tuesday became Taco Saturday as taco vendors from across the Alamo City competed to see who has the best taco. Dozens of taquerias, restaurants and food trucks faced off in this event. The vendors were judged on a variety of categories from best breakfast taco to puffiest taco. But the event wasn't just about competition. That's right. The event is meant to celebrate the food and culture surrounding the unofficial dish of San Antonio. So how good was it? Mm, I gotta give it an eight. Honestly, eight out of ten. I gotta be honest. Scenery, just great. <laughs> I mean, really cool festival here. Glad to be part of it. There were also cooking demonstrations at the event, along with musical performances featuring local and regional artists and DJs. You had me at taco. You That's know, I grew up in the Midwest in a taco desert, so Taco Bell was my only <laughs> frame of reference oh, before no. I moved here. I've expanded the horizons. The menu has gotten okay. much better, but you, Taco Bell's still a good thing to have every now and then. I don't know. You landed in the right place. That's all yes. we have to say. Although it is a lot hotter here than it was in the taco desert yes. of yeah. Ohio. Yes. <laughs> it's hot here. Many times it's can hot. we say the word taco in two minutes? I think a lot. Let's go back taco, and count. Taco, 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 Do you know, taco. <laughs> taco cat spelled backwards is taco cat. That's right. <laughs> Stew on that one for a minute. Just let it let it sink in. Your mind. Blown. I needed that today, actually. <laughs> You're welcome. Mind uh, blown. <laughs> high temperatures across the country um, in the taco desert uh, around 80 in Cleveland. That sound about right, Tim? No. Yeah. A little warm for this time of year, 90 in St. Louis, definitely warm there for this time of year. I mean, y'all, even our 97 here, warm for this time of year. Again, the context of, of our climate and our temperatures, uh, you know, in a, through a climate lens, that's really important. We know it gets hot in Texas, right, as we get into late spring and early summer. But again, our temperatures have been about 10 to 15 degrees above average for this time of year. Currently 83 in Dallas, 81 El Paso, down to 66 now in Cleveland. And pretty cool up in the Pacific Northwest, 67 in Portland, uh, Oregon and 59 there in Seattle. So here's what we've got going on. We're cranking temperatures back up to the triple digit mark after being in the mid to upper 90s for the last several days. The reason why we've got another ridge of high pressure or another little mini heat high that will be building back in tomorrow, Monday, and it'll hang with us for a few days early next week as well. So that's why we'll continue to challenge and likely break some records here over the next few afternoons. 98 tomorrow. That would beat the old record by two degrees. Uh, we expect to beat the record by three degrees on Monday and then by one degree on Tuesday. So we're not blowing these out of the water, but I do expect over the next few afternoons, we will at the very least tie, if not break and set some new record high temperatures right now. Doing a bit better, but still awfully warm out there. 85 at the airport, 84 Holotus, 83 Divine, and 79 in Seguin. Our dew point numbers 
We've got a bit of a spread right now. We're in the upper 60s around San Antonio, but meanwhile, still some folks in the 50s and 40s out across the hill country. That's feeling pretty dry. If you were with us uh, earlier this evening at 5 o'clock uh, for our newscast and you saw the dew point map, you saw more folks in the 50s and 40s. So we did have some dry air mix in during the hottest part of the day, but now dew point numbers are coming back up and it's starting to feel more muggy out there tonight and it'll feel muggy all the way through the morning hours tomorrow. We had a few very small spotty storms across mainly the northern tier of the hill country through about sunset, then they fizzled out. We got the leftover cloud cover around San Antonio, so some high clouds were pushed in from the north, but majority of folks didn't see any rain even across the hill country earlier this evening. As we head into the overnight hours, mostly clear skies. I can't rule out a few clouds early tomorrow, but just like today, any clouds in the morning will burn off really quickly. Temperature wise in the morning will start you off near 70 for pretty much everyone with high humidity. As we get into the afternoon, abundant sunshine, a lot of blue sky coming your way tomorrow. That means it's going to be another very hot day. Upper 90s, a really safe bet for a lot of us, but we will have some folks in the triple digits. Look for a high around 100 in Floresville tomorrow. Also a high around 100 in Nixon. 96 Helotus tomorrow afternoon, 101 Sabinal, 98 in Kerrville as we wrap up the weekend. Now, just like today, tomorrow I expect our dew point numbers to fall during the hottest part of the day. So that's going to keep our heat index readings or our feels like temperatures from getting too out of control. They'll be right around the actual air temperature, if not a few degrees lower than that. So that's a little bit of good news. Also looking at tomorrow's wind speeds, we won't have much of a breeze tomorrow. South winds about 5 to 10 miles per hour, even through the hottest part of the day. So we won't have much of a breeze um, and it's going to be a hot one. Look for a high around 98. We do have that lunar eclipse tomorrow night. Viewing looks good. Sky conditions look good for that. I'll have that forecast coming up a little bit later, guys. I did, in fact, write out Taco Cat. <laughs> And backwards, it is spelled. Do you Taco think Cat. Katie would lie to us? I don't think Never. so, but you know, I'm a visual learner, yes. so she was in fact right. So you got to trust the forecast now. There you go. She knows things. <laughs> All right, Larry, Cowboys rookies getting to show off their skills at minicamp. Yeah, and one of those rookies is defensive end Sam Williams out of Ole Miss. When defensive coordinator Dan Quinn visited him at Ole Miss, he came back and told the Cowboys he wants to coach that young man. Plus, what is Spencer Burford trying to show the 49ers coaching staff? Coming up. The, the whole city was on board and the whole city was behind me. So um, shout out to the 210, shout out to San Antonio, Texas. Wagner High School's very own Spencer Burford showed San Antonio love while meeting with 49ers media in Big Board Sports. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. After meeting with Ole Miss defensive end Sam Williams leading up to the NFL draft, Dallas Cowboys defensive coordinator Dan Quinn told head coach Mike McCarthy he'd really like to coach that guy. And his wish came true when the boys selected Williams in the second round. Quinn formed a good relationship while visiting with Williams, and now he's working with him at Cowboys rookie minicamp. What did Quinn like about Williams after working him out at Ole Miss? I'd say just his uh, initial quickness, you know, and sometimes as a pass rusher, beating someone to the punch uh, is more than half the job. And so if you have the quickness to, to get on somebody both mentally and physically to put that kind of pressure on somebody, and I felt that one with him. When I came here, I told him I was going to miss my flight on purpose so I won't have to leave. Like, I just, I mean, it, it, it's just a connection that I can't explain. Um, like today, I had fun today, and coach was pumping us up. Uh, they teaching us and pumping us at the same time. Like you can't ask for anything better than that. So, last season Williams had 12 and a half sacks, a new Ole Miss school record. Now out in Houston, the Texans are putting their new draft class and undrafted free agents through a three-day rookie minicamp as well. Two of the Texans' top three picks last month were defensive backs, including safety Jalen Petrie out of Baylor. Their first of two second-round selections. Houston is attempting to rebuild a secondary with Petrie and Derek Stingley Jr. Head coach Levy Smith wants his rookies to learn the Texans' way during minicamp. So Petrie's asked, what has he learned so far about the Texans' way? It's all about being a professional, you know, doing things the right way, making sure that you're being respectful to all those that are around you and of your space. I think when you do that, you end up being successful in, in, in where, wherever you're at and whatever you're doing. So that's kind of the main things that coach is kind of preaching right now. 
Some 30 players are at Texans rookie minicamp, which wraps up tomorrow. Former UTSA offensive lineman Spencer Burford is getting his first taste of the NFL at San Francisco 49ers rookie minicamp, being held in Santa Clara, California, where the Niners are practicing under clear skies with temperatures in the high 70s and low 80s. Burford, who played both guard and tackle in college, was asked what does he want to show the coaching staff and impress upon them? I just want to show them that I'm a man of my word. Um, you know what I'm saying? I come in here, you know what I'm saying? Of course, we got a big role, we got some big shoes to fill, you know what I'm saying? Right off the bat, especially being fresh out of college and how young I am. Um, um, they, they got high standards for me, and so I just need to meet, reach them, you know what I'm saying? Meet them and excel and go push past those ex expectations that they have for me. Um, so that's just going to come with everything that has came with before and even more. So that's all I'm looking forward to, you know what I'm saying? Just being a man of my word. Burford's versatility will allow him to compete at multiple spots right away. San Antonio FC played on the road to Miami FC this evening and was looking to get back to their winning ways. 42nd minute, Justin Dillon gets Miami's loose touch and passes to DeShane Beckford, who shoots and scores, netting his first goal with SAFC, and it's 1-0 San Antonio. That ball ricocheting off a defender and in. Mitchell Tanner would add a PK in stoppage time, and SAFC wins 2-0 at Miami FC, picking up three big points. So we've got UIL baseball playoffs featuring Reagan and Smithson Valley plus 6A track and field state championships coming up later in sports. You guys are all over the place. We are. As always, doing a great job. Thank Thanks, you. Larry. Parents locally and around the country struggling to find formula for their babies. How the White House is trying to help and what they're doing for parents across the country. And a local resource that helps lots of families here in San Antonio affected by high gas prices. How the price of diesel is hurting them. We'll tell you all about it right after this. It is a ripple effect caused by the pain at the pump. It's a story that caught a lot of attention this week on KSAT.com. AAA says gas prices have hit another record this week with an average of $4 a gallon in San Antonio. Meanwhile, average diesel prices are now north of $5 a gallon. Yeah, that price tag is another challenge for the supply chain. As KSAT's Alicia Barrera reports, the San Antonio Food Bank says this is making it harder to feed local families. Salas Calvillo has driven this diesel truck for four years. I'm a Hope and a school driver, so I deliver to the, the senior centers here in San Antonio, um, and then I go as far as um, Uvalde and Sabinal, uh, Lakey. He's part of the diesel guzzling fleet of about 50 San Antonio food bank trucks that help feed the hungry. Now we serve 29 counties here in southwest Texas. But lately, CEO and President Eric Cooper says it's getting harder to feed families as the spike in diesel prices has put them $20,000 over budget for this year. Roughly $1,000 per day is the increase in what we're paying today than what we were a year ago in increased costs around diesel. According to AAA, the average for diesel prices in San Antonio last week were just shy of $5. And this week, they're up even higher at $5.29. But it's not just these prices that worry drivers like Sabas. He says job security is also on his mind. How are they going to pay us and pay for the gas? You know, what's going to have to happen? I was filling up at 150, both filling up my main tank and with the reefer. Now it's like, shoot, almost $250, $300 that I'm filling up twice a week. And although under a lot of pressure, Cooper says feeding 90,000 families a week is top priority and can't be done without drivers like Calvillo. We're going to do everything we can to make sure we're successful. And so San Antonio, if you can help us, now's the time. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. A nationwide baby formula shortage has many parents worried. The shortage hitting lower income families particularly hard as the administration now scrambling to ease the shortages. The federal government says it's stepping up efforts to help panicked families feed their babies. Many people finding store shelves empty. Doctors are warning parents, do not try to make your own formula. The biggest thing that parents need to avoid doing right now is trying to make that homemade formula or water down formula, both of which can be absolutely catastrophic nutritionally for children. The White House says it's working to increase supply of safe formulas, rolling out new measures, giving families on government assistance the ability to buy other brands of formula. The shortage has also sp sparked a surge in interest at milk banks across the country, with some mothers offering to donate breast milk to help other parents. 
Let's get to the latest now on the war in Ukraine. President Volodymyr Zelensky saying his forces have taken down 200 Russian military aircraft as Pentagon officials warn about a possible delay of aid from the U.S. $40 billion in aid to Ukraine stalled in the Senate right now. Pentagon spokesman John Kirby saying if the new funds are not approved quickly, supplies of U.S. weapons to Ukraine could be interrupted. If we don't get those authorities soon, I mean, uh, it's possible that there could be a bubble, a, a period of time at, at which, you know, there's just not, nothing moving, and we want to make sure we avoid that. Meanwhile, in Kyiv, the first Russian soldier in court charged with the killing of a Ukrainian civilian. Prosecutors here saying many more cases against Russian troops are sure to be brought. A new report released Friday suggests higher vaccination rates could have prevented half of the COVID-19 deaths in the U.S. in 2021. Researchers found that if each state had continued at their peak vaccination rate until all adults were fully vaccinated, about 319,000 lives could have been saved. That would have cut the total number of COVID-19 deaths in the U.S. by about a third. Data from the CDC says a quarter of adults in the U.S. are not fully vaccinated and more than three in five adults have not received a booster shot. Still ahead as the night beat rolls on, we are a day away from seeing a blood moon. What's that? When can you expect to see it? The FDA issuing a warning after reports of children eating THC infused gummies. Why kids are mistaking them for candy and the dangers they're causing. The FDA issuing a warning about a growing danger to children on Friday. Pot-laced edibles, which often look like popular candies and cereals, might be enticing to kids, but of course they should never eat them. The THC-infused products have caused serious symptoms like hallucinations, rapid heart rate, and vomiting in young children. The FDA reports many kids have even had to be hospitalized. Since the beginning of last year, public health officials have logged more than 100 adverse events from edibles with THC. Big meat processors in the U.S. are being investigated after they bypassed COVID-19 safety measures and regulations. The investigation focused on known brand Tyson, Smithfield and National Beef. Congressional investigators say thousands of employees were infected with the virus, which resulted in hundreds of deaths. Committee members also say meat processors misled the public when they claimed the country was near a product shortage. Turning to the skies now, a partial eclipse this weekend will make the moon appear red for a short time before a total eclipse. It'll happen Sunday night. Earth Sky says the partial eclipse will start just before 9.30 p.m. Central Time. Then the total lunar eclipse will begin around 10.30 Central and end just before 1 a.m. on Monday. Meteorologist Katie Blake here to explain more. We've seen a few of these. The question is, will we have clouds in the way? Because this time of year, we tend to get the clouds at night and yes. the morning. So are we going to be able to see this thing? I, yes, I, I, we feel really good about being able to see it and see it well tomorrow night. So there's some good news there. And I've got a more detailed forecast for you tomorrow night uh, for that eclipse viewing coming up in just a few minutes. Also going to kind of walk you through an explainer of, of what's going to happen with this eclipse. So we do have that to look forward to after what's going to be another really hot one tomorrow. High temperatures today. We know at the airport we got up to 97 that tied the old record for today's date. 101 the high in Pleasanton, 97 in Del Rio, 95 Kerrville, also 95 in Beeville this afternoon. Temperatures now falling into the 80s. It's still plenty warm out there. 82 Pleasanton, 85 Uvalde, uh, just shy of 80 there in Rock Springs. Humidity is building back in as we speak after falling off a bit this afternoon. So we'll wake up to muggy conditions in the morning, but just like today, tomorrow during the hottest part of the day, we'll have some dry air mixing in that will help us out when it comes to the heat index. We'll talk more about your Sunday. Also, I'll get you that lunar eclipse forecast coming up in just a few. We are just getting a rendition of total eclipse of the heart. Bonnie Taylor. <laughs> but we're talking about a total lunar eclipse, yes. not, nothing of the heart. Not of the heart. <laughs> Leave our hearts out of this. <laughs> okay, okay, fine. Uh, yes, in these types of things, we don't always get a good view of them because, as Tim was saying, sometimes if they happen late at night, we've got the clouds building back in, but things look good for tomorrow. So here's what's happening. The Earth will cast a shadow thanks to the sun. The sun, the Earth, and the moon at one point will be lined up perfectly in a row, and it's uh, the shadow that will be cast by the Earth that the moon will pass through so that partial eclipse will begin first. It begins earlier around 930 and then the total eclipse
eclipse lasts for roughly an hour and a half, and that's where the moon is going to turn that shade of red. So here's your viewing forecast for tomorrow night. This is late for the kiddos. This is probably going to be way after bedtime, considering it's a school night. The eclipse itself again begins around 930. That's the partial eclipse uh, totality where the moon starts to turn that red color will begin around 1030 p.m. And then that will end just a few minutes before midnight. It'll be warm out there tomorrow night. But as far as sky conditions go, that's really what's most important. We anticipate clear to most clear skies, not just around San Antonio, but also all across South Central Texas. So viewing should be pretty good this morning. We did have a decent amount of cloud cover around early in the day, but it was gone very quickly. And this was our view for the majority of the day today. Abundant sunshine, all of that solar radiation really heating things up again. 97 this afternoon, tying the old record uh, for today's date, which was set back in 1995, likely going to break a record tomorrow and for the next couple afternoons. Temperatures currently 82 Austin, 85 here in San Antonio, 87 Catula and uh, low 80s there as you get farther off to the west. Our dew points, uh, we still got a little bit of a spread here. Anywhere from the upper 60s, low 70s, down closer to the Gulf Coast to the 40s, still across parts of the hill country. So what happened this afternoon, dry air mixed in across a good portion of the area. And so that kicked in a more of a dry heat this afternoon. We'll see the sim, uh, same thing happen tomorrow. So as we go to bed tonight and through sunrise tomorrow morning, dew points shoot back up for everyone. So early tomorrow, our dew points are back in the upper 60s near 70. So it is going to be feeling very muggy if you need to be out early Sunday morning. But just like today in the afternoon during the hottest part of the day, we'll pull these dew point numbers down just a bit. A lot of us will see dew points in the 50s that kicks in more of a dry heat. And that also means we won't see those really crazy heat index readings tomorrow afternoon. The heat index tomorrow should be right around the actual air temperature, may even be a couple of degrees below the actual air temperature. So we'll stay away from any heat advisory criteria tomorrow, but it's important to mention, uh, please, if you spend a lot of time outdoors and, and you're going to be active exercising, just make sure you're properly hydrated. And if you do start to feel ill, you know, heat cramps, heat exhaustion can can sneak up on even the most seasoned of us Texans. So please just be careful out there in the heat. We're not really going to have the wind on our side tomorrow. Winds will be light on Sunday, just about five to 10 miles per hour, even during the heat of the day. So we won't really be able to rely on a breeze to help us out much. Current view of satellite and radar. We saw the bats take off there earlier this evening. That's the green that you see there. Otherwise, we've just got some high clouds from decaying thunderstorms that popped up this afternoon way north of San Antonio. Some severe weather ongoing up across parts of Kansas and Oklahoma tonight. Future cast through the overnight hour shows just really quiet weather all across the Lone Star State. A few morning clouds for us and then more blue sky tomorrow, not just here, but also all across Texas. And that means it's going to be another really hot day all across the Lone Star State. High temperatures in the triple digits from San Angelo up to Lubbock and over to El Paso, Laredo. You'll be there as well tomorrow afternoon around San Antonio, 98, but that would be a new record for the date. Thankfully, lower humidity, that helps us out a bit, but again, not much of a breeze for your Sunday. We're likely going to continue to break old records and set new ones into the early part of next week. We pull those highs into the mid 90s. Late next week, that's still about 10 degrees uh, above average for this time of year. Some low, low rain chances about this time next weekend, guys. This makes me want to cry a little bit. Mm. Just a little. Me too. A little. All right. Thanks, Katie. Mm -hmm. As the school year wraps up, the baseball playoff season is heating up. Yeah, Reagan was taking on uh, Round Rock Cedar Ridge today in the second round of the Class 6A playoffs, and this one had a wild ending, as did the Smithson Valley game. Plus, we're also talking 6A state track and field championships. We got the complete wrap-up coming up. Reagan faced Round Rock Cedar Ridge in the second round of the Class 6A baseball playoffs at NEISD Sports Park today in Game 2 of that series. Reagan scored first in the bottom of the first via a wild pitch, allowing Tegan Peoples to score to make it 1-0 Rattlers. I mean, fans were still finding their seats when that play happened. Bottom of the seventh now, tied at three. Luke Sasser bounces one high to the pitcher, but he can't make a play, and Tegan Peoples slides home with the game-winning run. Reagan takes it 4-3 in the series, 2-zip, advancing to the third round just like 
like they did last season. More 6A playoffs in Dripping Springs, Smithson Valley, and Austin Westlake. Top seven, Westlake down two. The batter hits it to short, but David DeHoyos can't make the play. E6 allows a run to score. Meanwhile, second baseman Bryce Wells gets the ball and throws back to DeHoyos, who dives and tags the runner out at second base for the final out of the ball game. Man, that was close. Smith Valley wins decisive game three, five to four, advancing, advancing to round three, where they'll face the Reagan Rattlers again. They met last season in the third round with the Rangers winning the series two games to one. Now, TCU baseball destroyed Kansas this afternoon, 30 to three, tying a school record for most runs. Outfielder Porter Brown from Wagon High School went four for six and set a school record with 10 runs batted in. He had two home runs, including a grand slam in the seventh inning. The final day of the UIL State Track and Field Championships featured Class 6A schools. Case that told Andrew Seeley was at the track this evening, and he has more. For the second straight season, the San Antonio area is welcoming home a state medalist in the girls' Class 6A 100-meter dash. Clemens Sr. Sanaya Friendly racing out of lane 7, hangs with the leaders, and crosses the line third overall in 11.57 seconds. She then followed that up with another third place finish in the 200 meter dash. Her time there, 23.59 seconds. Two bronze medals for the Buff senior in her final high school meet. I feel amazing. Coming in as a freshman, I wanted to be one of the few to break some of the records on the board and to break all of the records in all my events. I feel amazing. In the boys version of the 200 meter dash, Judson Jr. Anthony Evans stayed up with the pack. He also takes third overall in 21.1 seconds and his Rockets teammate DeMarco Escobar finished third as well in the 400 meter run in 46.69 seconds, so a pair of bronze medals are heading back to Judson High School. Plenty of great performances in the field events. Reagan senior Taylor Wise saved her best jump for last in the Class 6A triple jump, ending with a best of 42 feet flat. Look at the reaction there. Weiss earned a silver medal for that performance. I was like, okay. Like, I don't even know what I was saying. I was like, okay, we did that. Like, I actually yeah. did that because, like, I knew I was capable of it, but actually executing the jump and being yeah. able to do it was amazing. It's an amazing feeling. Weiss also finished fourth in both the long jump and 300 meter hurdle events. Last but not least, Class 6A girls pole vault, New Braunfels junior Caressa Vitus had a chance to clear the bar at 13 feet even. She can't quite get over it, but because of her perfect record during the lower heights, Vitus is bringing home a bronze medal. This has been my goal since I was like in seventh grade coming to watch the state meet. So I came in here with the goal of just to have fun and to enjoy the experience. So to walk away with the medal is just like amazing. That concludes the UIL State Track and Field Championships. In case you missed any of the highlights from our area, you can find them all right now on the Big Game coverage page at KSAT.com. From Mike A. Meyer Stadium in Austin, Andrew Seeley, KSAT 12 Sports. Thank you, Andrew. And I love that reaction from Taylor. How awesome was that? It made me feel so happy. Yeah, her run around was almost as great as the, the triple jump. Man, that's good stuff. They're all winners in my book because they beat me in all those things. Yeah. Thanks, Larry. <laughs> we'll be right back.